Hey, I'm Ben. I'm Daisha. I'm Adric. I'm Brian. And we are the Thomases, and wherever you are tonight, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. We are at the end of what has been a very hard and long year, and yet what a better time to celebrate the coming of Jesus, our Creator and our hope, as He came into a time of darkness to bring light and to be our light. So tonight, we want to welcome you wherever you're at to sing with us, to read along, and to join as we celebrate and think through God, the Creator of this world, who came to give us hope. Merry Christmas and celebrate tonight with us. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, which was David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, 
She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. And then the baby was working on the computer. And then the, love, and then the guy that's on snack to eat. And then it hanged up all his Christmas stuff. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. What? What? what did he have? That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped, snuggled in strips of cloth laying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, for it was just as the angel had told them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Imago family. Welcome to the McCoy's house. Merry Christmas to you all. We're going to sing some Christmas carols. The first song would be, O Come All Ye Faithful.
the Wallaces, and this is Isaiah chapter 9. For, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from that time and forevermore. continue to worship tonight, uh, I want to open the Bible and read a passage out of Luke's gospel about the birth of Christ. It says this in verse 4, So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David, and he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And the shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared and the angel praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels left, they said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told them about. And we know that story goes that they travel off to Bethlehem, they find Mary and Joseph and Jesus, and they are amazed and they go about spreading the good news. You know, 2,000 plus years ago, this announcement that the angel gave about who that baby was, was the first announcement that God's king has come. His Messiah has come. It was really important, these small details in here about, you know, Joseph being in the line of David. But genealogically, Jesus came and was in the line of David to be king. He came as our Messiah. And yet 2,000 years ago, nobody was paying attention. It strikes me that the God of the universe would come into the world in such an unsuspecting way that he would show up in the world basically unseen and unthought of. And yet heaven is paying attention. Heaven is announcing. I love that the shepherds are the first ones to hear. Shepherds who were seen as a very low caste kind of people, people who didn't have much credibility socially, and they're the ones that get to peer in. They're the first ones to experience God among us in the baby Jesus. There's these pictures of Jesus in Revelation when he comes again. And these are a picture of Jesus in the, in the full of his kingship, coming back as the resurrected king to set the world right. And in there, he's just crowned with glory and power. And yet his first coming, he was clothed with weakness with humility, with innocence, with fragility, in complete dependence upon Mary. And you and I, tonight, we gather in between these two Advents. And I know for many of us, this year has been extraordinarily hard. Um, you may be gathering tonight and loved ones that you were hoping to gather with aren't here anymore because of COVID. You may be gathering tonight and you've lost your job and you don't know what next year looks like. But I want you to know tonight that, that whatever we have lost, the promise of God is that we have gained a savior. We have gained a king. And for those of you who have put your faith in Christ, Christ this child who grew up to, to be the one who was crucified for us, who resurrected for us, who ascended into heaven is reigning for us, then tonight you have a prince of peace. And in the midst of all the anxiety, God is your peace. For those of you who are, are mourning tonight, you have a God of all comfort who is with you in the risen and resurrected King. For those of you who tonight are fearful about what the future holds, you have a promise from this baby who grew up to be the God-man that he will never leave you and never forsake you. And I don't know about you, but in all that we have experienced this year, the rock and the anchor that God has given us is himself. And how radical, how incredible that in the giving of himself, 
He took on our own humanity in the fragility of Christmas Eve. And yet we look forward, brothers and sisters, to a time when Jesus will come again. And he will come again, not in uh, hiddenness, not in humiliation, but he will come in power. I was reading in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, and it paints this picture of Jesus coming again with heaven standing open and him on a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True, and with justice he, he, he judges and wages war. And his eyes were like blazing fire, on his head were many crowns, his name written on him that no one knows but himself. And he was dressed in a robe that, of sacrifice, and his name is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven were following him, riding on the white horses and dressed in fine living, white and clean. And coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword, which to strike down evil. And he will rule them with an iron scepter. He trends the wide press of his fury, the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh was his name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now that's, a, that's kind of like a freaky picture, right? But what that picture is, is that the God who is with you now, he is coming again and he is coming in power uh, with a tattoo on his leg of all things that says King of King and Lord of Lords. He is coming with truth and mercy and he's coming to set the world right because he hears your mourning, he hears your groaning, he hears your pain. And and so for us, this Christmas Eve, between the coming of the baby Jesus and the coming of the King of Kings on that white horse, the faithful one and the true one, God calls us to stand in a place of faith this Christmas, to stand in a place of worship, to stand in a place of awe, to love faithfully those around us, and to be patient because he's coming again. Brothers and sisters, my prayer is that this Christmas between the Advents is a Christmas where the nearness of God and the hope in his future reign will sustain you, will comfort you, and will bring you joy. Merry Christmas. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. Slave is our brother, and in 
I'm Cheryl Baker, and I invite you to pray with us. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey church, as we end our time together today, we wanna take a couple moments to say Merry Christmas to one another. So from the Howard family, that's Bob, Simone, and and Jack Jack Sequoia. Sequoia. Merry Merry Christmas, Christmas, Imago. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. From From the Garlands. What's up, Imago family? Merry Christmas from the Raymonds. Merry Merry Christmas Christmas from Gina Gina and Alishan Virjanian. Merry Christmas from the Mall! Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, Cindy, and baby Bella. We just moved here from California and have been tuning in online. And we hope that you had a great Advent. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Feliz Feliz Navidad. Navidad! Merry Christmas, Imago, from the Nolan family. Hi, we're the Pacquiao. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amar. Amago Day. Zoom. Peru. Yay! Hey, Amago. This is Jody from North Portland. And I'm just wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And really looking forward to seeing you, hopefully soon. It's blue! Merry Christmas! This is Wawasa for Team. We are part of the Water Project and Imago Day's work to provide clean water in Western Kenya. We are here to say Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas from the Cappers, Theo, Jude, Daddy, and Mommy. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Love the parties! And Brad and Brenna. Hi, Imago. My name is Malia. This is my daughter, Aurelia. Hi. We're longtime Imago attendees. We miss our church family so much. We hope that you're all enjoying a wonderful Advent season. Merry Christmas from Salem. Hi, Imago Day. It's me, Gabe, from Milwaukee. And I'm Teresa, wishing everybody a Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. And many more. Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas, Imago Day. Merry Christmas from the Seagull family. Nick. Gina. Scott. Gracie. Hi, Imago. We're the Smalls in Oregon City. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Cottingham family. We love you. Bye. I'm Danny. This is Shutshine. I'm Jaden. And I'm Deanna. Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad! Happy birthday, Jesus! We love you. From the Rutherfords, Alan and Jody. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from, from the Schneiders. Schneiders. Merry, Merry Christmas, Imago Day. Day. From the Newport. Rose City Park. Oh, hey. Merry Christmas from Molly. Merry Christmas from the Boobnas. Merry Christmas from the Aussies. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas from the Comptons. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Campbells. Merry Christmas, Imago Day, from the Bartlett family. Merry Christmas from the Thermos. Happy birthday, Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! From the Wilsons. Merry Christmas from the Smith family. Merry Christmas from, from Ernie and, and Mary Nichols. Nichols. Jesus, Jesus is born. born. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas times from the highs. Merry, Merry Christmas from the Dudley family. Paul. Unto us a child is born. Merry Christmas from the Corys. Merry Christmas from the Dill. Merry Christmas and long Merry 
Christmas from the dryers. Nick, Larissa, Peter, and brand new babies. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from, from the Enns family. Merry Christmas from Bill and Glenna Gates, Lucy, and Linus. Merry Christmas, Amago. Merry Christmas. We miss you. And Lily also. <laughs> Merry Christmas from the Kruger family. Hi, Amago Day. Merry Christmas from the Alvarados. Merry Christmas from the Andrews family. Feliz Navidad. We wanted to, uh, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody, from the staff and pastors and elders. Also, Merry Christmas from the Dean family. Both Mike and Davia have had COVID in December, so you haven't seen much of them. But they wanted me to make sure to wish you a Merry Christmas from the Dean family. And Merry Christmas from the McKinleys. We know this will be a quiet Christmas, but we pray that this is a Christmas filled with just the Lord's loving presence that you'll know he is with you and that we can just rejoice in the coming of our Savior. So let me pray as we finish our time together. Father God, we thank you so much that you have given us Jesus Christ and the miracle of the manger of that baby as he grew and became our sacrifice and our resurrection king and it is currently reigning, God. We pray that we would be filled with the joy of the angels uh, who, who rejoice and give glory to God on high. We thank you so much that at Christmas we have such a deep, uh, profound reason for joy, and it's because you have changed everything. And we thank you in the name of that baby, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. We miss you.